Hi there, this is Mr. Kolu for Kolu Math, and uh, today we're going to be looking at probability. Uh, in this part, we're going to be looking at just simple probability. So uh, let's start with the definition. Probability is the chance an event will occur. And they go on to give us a little bit more. They say the probability of an event, again, don't let that scare you, that's all it means, is the probability of what's ever inside, in this case, the event, is the number of favorable outcomes over, it's a fraction, probability is always a fraction, so we have the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. And uh, I don't really like all that complicated words. I'm going to try to replace it with something a bit easier for me to remember, which is how many things will make you happy over the total number of things. And if you remember this really simple technique, you can solve all of the kind of probability problems we'll be looking at today. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, we we'll start with some jelly beans here, and uh, we're going to put them in a sack, and we're going to shake them up real good, and uh, I'm going to ask you to please reach your hand inside and pick one green jelly bean. Now we want to know the probability of drawing a green jelly bean. What would that be? So let's go ahead and use our technique, how many things will make you happy over total number of things, and plug in what we have for our situation. So if you take a look at the beans up there, we've got two green jelly beans. If I got either one of those, I'd be happy. And we're going to put it over the total number of things, which in this case is eight total jelly beans. All right, we can take that two over eight, we can reduce that to one over four, and there's our probability. But what exactly does that mean? Well, there's a couple different ways we can look at it. The first way to think about it is to use the fraction and convert it into an expression like this. If we did the experiment four times, so we have the number four there, beginning with the same eight beans each time, of course, you can expect to get about one green. That's basically what the one over four probability is telling us. And in fact, we can extend that to if the, we did the experiment eight times, we can expect to get two greens. If we did the experiment 8,000 times, we would expect to get around 2,000 greens. Okay? Uh, you can also look at probability as sort of like a, a glass or a graduated cylinder like we have here. And uh, probability, when it's at 0%, the, the glass is empty. There's no chance of this event happening. It definitely will not happen. And uh, something like that would be that the sun rises in the west. The sun, if you know, always rises in the east. It'll never rise in the west. It'll definitely not happen. There's a zero probability of the sun rising in the west. Okay, if we go up the uh, scale a little further, we get halfway up to about 50%. And a 50% chance is may happen, may not. Okay, it has the exact same likelihood as happening as not happening. So, for example, if we flip a coin and we land on heads, that's 50-50. It happens half the time, the other half of the time it doesn't. And if we continue going up the scale all the way up to 100% probability, well, that's something that will definitely happen. No matter what, a hap absolutely certain 100% will happen. And uh, you can think of something like the Earth will rotate, because every day the Earth is going to continue to rotate. It's definitely going to happen. Um, and in between those, as you go from 50 to 100%, it gets more and more likely to happen. And as you go from 50% down to 0%, it gets less and less likely to happen. And we can use that chart to sort of estimate just how likely an event will be. Also, it's important to notice that when we're talking about probability, it's always a value between 0 and 100%, or 0 and 1, or 0 and 1 as a fraction. And if you can see, it's because we can't quite fill up our graduated cylinder anymore. Once we're at 100%, we're as sure as we possibly can be that something is going to happen. So if someone tells you they're 110% likely to do something, you know that they're full of it because that's impossible. You can't be more than 100% probable because 100% is absolutely going to happen. Okay, let's take a look at another example. We've got some cards here. Uh, if you notice, some are uh, red circles and some are blue squares. And we're going to take those cards, we're going to shuffle them up, mix them up, and... Uh, we want to know what's the probability of drawing a blue card. Well, let's take out our trusty tool and uh, take a look. It says how many things will make you happy over how many things do you have total. In this circumstance, we're looking for three blue cards, and we have a total of seven cards. So we can go ahead and make that into a fraction. We've got about 0.428 or 42.8%. Uh, question arises, will it happen? 
very kind of obvious question for a thing of probability. Let's talk about it. So if we check it out on the probability meter, 42.8% will bring us just about that high, which we can see is right below 50, may happen, may not. So it's almost like flipping a coin, a little bit less than that, a little bit less likely than uh, flipping a coin. Question, which card are you more likely to draw? Well, we have already know about the blues. Let's check out the reds. Our probability of drawing a red, well, four red cards total. Those are the things that will make us happy. And we've got a total of seven cards, red and blue, put together. Okay? So we can go ahead and make that into a fraction. We've got 57.1%. And we can compare the two uh, percentages next to each other. We've got the blue percentage on the left, the red percentage on the right. And if we wanted to know which one is most likely, what we just do is check the numerical values. And whoever has the largest numerical value is therefore the most likely. And if we went ahead and compared the two next to each other, you can see the probability meter on the right is a little bit larger than the probability meter on the left. Something else interesting to notice is that if we take the uh, probability of getting a red and add it to the probability of getting a blue, we get 100%, which makes sense, because if we add the two percentages together, we get about 100%. Get a little error there from rounding, but it's about 100%. And that's because one or the other has to happen. So you cannot draw a green card. It's impossible. You're either going to get a red or you're going to get a blue. You have a 100% chance of getting either one. Let's take a look at another example. We've got a spinner here. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with these by now. And... Uh, the question is, what is the probability of getting a number greater than 4? Now, let's take a look at our uh, fraction here. Number of things that will make us happy. Well, in this circumstance, we've got two spaces, 5 and 6, that are greater than 4. And uh, we have a total of 6 total spots for it to land on. Okay, 2 over 6, we can make that into a fraction. We get about 33.3%. And if we ask ourselves a big question, how likely is that? Well, here it is on the probability meter. And you can see it's below 50-50, somewhere in between that and definitely not happening. So it's very unlikely to happen. And in fact, using the numbers, we can see that it's twice as likely to not happen as it is to happen. Because there's the probability of us getting a number four or less. And again, both of them will add up to 100%. All right, so let's take a look at another probability question. I'm sure you're familiar with this one. We've got a quarter here, and we want to know what's the probability of a flipped coin landing on tails? Good question, probably a very simple one. You've thought about this numerous times. Uh, we've got one coin, and uh, the total number of things we have uh, is one coin, so our probability... Oh. What, is there there's a problem with that? Wow, uh, we better take a look at our tool again. Uh, let's see what we've got there. How many things will make us happy? Well, is it the one coin that's going to make us happy? No, actually, it's the specific side of the coin that's going to make us happy. And we know that a coin has two sides. So let's go ahead and update our, uh, our key there, and we'll fill in with something that makes a little bit more sense. Because so the thing that's going to make us happy is the side, tails, not the coin. And the total number of things we have there is not just one coin, we have two sides. So we're talking about sides here. We can go ahead and pop that in a fraction. We get 50%. How likely is that? Let's check it out. And it's right in the middle. And in fact, that's the example we used for what 50-50 was. It may happen, it may not. And if we compare the two together, again, they should look exactly the same, heads and tails. And if we combine the two values together, we should take the 50% chance of getting heads, 50% chance of getting tails, get ourselves 100%. Because you can only get one side or the other. Right? One or the other has to happen. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah, hi, Joe. Uh, what's up? Yes, um, I'm just wondering here. Are we talking about a probability of one half? Uh, yeah, Joe. Very good, uh, conversion there. Pretty nice. Um, and I'm wondering, can we apply the same logic we used before to say that if we did the experiment two times, we can expect to get about one tails? Yeah, exactly, Joe. And if we did it four times, we can expect two tails? Yeah, I think you got it. 
What about ten times? If we did the experiment ten times, could we expect five? Sure, Joe. That's exactly how probability works. But how come last time I was flipping a coin, I happened to get ten tails in a row? How is that possible? Does probability even work? Oh, Joe, that's a great question. In fact, sometimes we do have very strange hap things happening, like getting ten tails in a row. Let's take a look at the wording there again. If you notice, Joe, we've got the word expect in there. And the word expect is about expectations. Yeah, sometimes you're going to get five tails, sometimes you're going to get more, sometimes you're going to get less. But on the average, you should expect to get about five. In fact, as we do the experiment more and more, Joe, it gets closer and closer to what we would expect from the probability. So if you did it a thousand times, getting 500 would actually probably happen more times than not. So, uh, the more times you do an experiment, the more the results will match the probability? Uh, exactly, Joe. 100% correct. All right, kids, uh, pretty good job. Uh, uh -oh. Well, it's time for a stretch it question, I guess. Uh, well, let's go ahead and stretch our brains. No big deal. Okay, so let's imagine ourselves a race. There's the starting line. There are our runners. And uh, I want to know, what's the probability that Mr. Red is going to win the race? Well, we could probably go back and use our old tool uh, with this one red runner that if he wins, we're going to be happy. We'll put that over a total of five total runners. So pop it in a fraction, and we get 20%. Mr. Red has a 20% probability of winning the race. Does that make sense? Does it make sense that uh, Mr. Red has a 20% probability chance of winning the race? <coughs> right, right. Why is that? Well, it's because races are games of ability or skill. They're not random games of chance like rolling a dice. For example, what you didn't know is that Mr. Blue over here had some uh, bad seafood last night. He's not feeling so well today. Uh, Mr. Purple uh, twisted his ankle two days ago, and uh, he just can't quite run the same. And uh, Mr. Green over here broke up with his girlfriend last night. His heart is just not in this race. So we can see that the actual chance of Mr. Red winning the race might be way greater than what probability told us. And that's because probability only helps with random games of chance. Okay, cool. Seems like you kids are on pretty good path towards getting through probability. I'll see you guys next time for compound probability, complex probability, oh, enough probability to make your head explode. See ya.